the most gangster politician ever. Cassius Marcellus Clay. Probably butchered the name. I ain't gonna lie. It's Christmas Eve. I hope you all have an amazing time. Before we do jump in this video, a lot of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. If you're one of those people that aren't subscribed, I really appreciate if you guys hit the subscribe button down below. But yeah, let's jump in this and check this out, man. Aww. It's a riveting story. <laughs> really good. All right, we gotta go. We gotta go. I gotta you got a feature? The about the guy I named you after, okay? You gotta go hang out with mom now. Wait, 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 wait. Did he actually name his baby after this guy? Today we're talking about the most gangster politician in American history. Ladies and gentlemen, no Cassius Marcellus Clay. A Oh, Cassius Marcellus Clay. Okay. AKA the Lion of Whitehall. Whitehall being his family home that he grew up in in Kentucky as the son of one of the richest slave owners in all of America. While going to college at Yale to become a lawyer, he would attend a speech from a famous abolitionist by the name of William Lloyd Garrison. And that speech would change the entire trajectory of Cassius Clay's life as well as American history. It is uh -huh. at that moment that Cassius Clay decided he was not only going to be quietly opposed to slavery, but that he was actively going to fight against it. Right. He would be set down the path to become the most influential abolitionist of all time if you don't know at this point in time there's basically two different camps you could fall into for being anti-slavery you could be an abolitionist or an emancipationist an emancip uh, i don't know what an abolitionist is or i'm but i'm just guessing for and against right so so yeah patientist is somebody that wants to vote it oh. out over time slavery He's you could be an saying. abolitionist or an emancipationist okay. an emancipationist is somebody that wants to vote it out over time over the next 5 10 20 years versus uh. an abolitionist which is somebody that believes we need to end slavery right now and they're willing to fight about it and in the case of cassius clay he was willing to fight anyone anywhere anytime you oh, see wow. cassius clay wasn't just some nobody punk kid that went off to college and decided that he didn't like slavery this was the son of one of the wealthiest slave owners in all of america so for him to come out and voice anti-slavery views yeah is a huge deal and it pissed off a lot of people so including his in the 1820s what do you do when you're pissed off you challenge somebody to a duel so needless to say <laughs> don't tell me do not tell me you challenged this dad to a duel bro no. the young cassius clay found himself partaking in an awful lot of duels and he never ever lost what? so obviously he's pretty good at it and what do you do when you find something you're pretty good at you want to keep doing it right right so cassius clay starts challenging anyone and everyone to a duel that dares to oppose him it oh became wow common knowledge in his community that cassius clay would be willing to fight the wind if it blew from the west and he wanted it to blow from the east this man went on a dueling rampage <laughs> so much so that by the time he graduated college he was considered to be the deadliest duelist in all of north america this guy Bro, that is mad that he's actually fine now. And that's crazy. It's like, in this time, you could just be like, you know what? Me and you were going to duel. It's all good with the law and stuff. Last man stand. Bro. Okay, okay, okay. This is getting interesting. This guy was putting slave owners in the dirt like he was Johnny Appleseed planting fucking trees. He became known as the deadliest abolitionist of all time. Wow. So he graduates from college, goes back home as a lawyer. Shortly after that, his father passes away and leaves everything to Cassius Clay. Cassius Clay immediately frees all of his father's slaves, costing himself $40,000, which is roughly Hell $2 yeah. million dollars today. And then he even gives some of the slaves land and money on top of it. Absolutely oh, what infuriating a guy. the pro-slavery people in Kentucky. So, what do you do when half the local population hates your guts? You run for public office, and that's exactly what Cassius Clay did. He served in the Kentucky State Legislature from 1835 to 1841, and then finally lost his re-election, to which the pro-slavery crowd breathed a huge sigh of relief because they finally defeated Cassius Clay, or so they thought. Clay He's gonna duel every single one, bro. He's gonna duel every... <laughs> crowd breathed a huge sigh of relief because they finally defeated Cassius Clay, oh, yeah? or so they thought. Clay immediately starts traveling the country, giving amazing anti-slavery speeches, winning over hearts and minds, and right? this absolutely infuriates the pro-slavery people because they don't know how to stop him. You can't legally stop a guy from talking to people that want to listen to him, and they can't legally kill Cassius Clay in a duel because he's the best duelist on earth. What uh... do you do? You've got to illegally kill him. The problem with that is they can't find a hitman that's dumb enough to think that they can take out Cassius Clay, so they have to go. Bro, he's really that skilled, man. Bro, this guy, bro, he sounds like an absolute badass, bro. The one crevice of the planet where they can find somebody truly insane enough to think that they can do this job. And that man's name was Sam Brown, an assassin from New Orleans. Uh -huh. 1834, Russell Cave, Kentucky. Cassius Clay's finishing up one of his world famous speeches as he pulls out a burlap sack, reaches into the sack and pulls out a holy Bible and says, for those of you that believe in the laws of God, I make to you this argument against slavery. Sets the Bible on the table. Reaches back in the sack, pulls out a copy of the U.S. Constitution and says, for those of you that believe in the laws of man, I present to you this argument against slavery. Sets 
sets the constitution down on the table, drops a burlap sack to the ground and says, for those of you that believe in neither the laws of God or man, I make to you this argument against slavery as he pulls out both of his pistols and sets them on the table, which I think we can all agree is gangster as fuck. And at yeah. this moment, Sam Brown comes up on stage. That is like some mob, some mob stuff. You know, like a, like a, a, a mob leader talking to like all the other mob people just whack out the guns put them on the table right this is the deal which i think we can all agree is gangster as fuck and at this moment sam brown comes up on stage and shoots cassius clay point blank in the chest luckily cassius clay never leaves home without his trusted bowie knife which resides inside of a metal sheath and that metal sheath would catch sam brown's bullet saving cassius clay's life at which point cassius clay what? would draw his bowie knife and charge sam brown sick whoa, 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 wait you would still be hurt from the impact of the bullet, no? You telling me you've been shot in the chest and you get it with the Bowie knife? Oh, okay. Cassius Clay's life. At which point, Cassius Clay would draw his Bowie knife and charge Sam Brown. Six of Sam Brown's friends in the audience tried to stop Cassius Clay. He would fight his six. way through all six of them, making his way to Sam Brown, promptly stabbing him in the chest, and then turning him into a Mr. Potato Head by cutting off his nose, lopping off his ear, and gouging out one of his eyes. Then the six men recovered and were able to peel Clay off of him. Not knowing what to do, knowing they couldn't stop Cassius Clay forever, they panicked probably for fear that cassius clay was going to start shoving this guy's facial features up his ass next they did the only thing they could come up with to get the two apart they picked up their friend sam brown threw him over a seven foot high stone wall he fell down an embankment and into a creek bed to finally get cassius clay away from him. What? somehow sam brown survived but not only was he lucky for that he was also dumb as fuck because he then decided to take cassius clay to court because apparently after cassius clay stabbed him the first time they were even on the whole assassination attempt thing so what? What? Cassius Clay should go to prison for mayhem. So Cassius Clay calls upon his older cousin, one of the best lawyers on the planet that had never lost an open court with over 40 years of experience. Ah, uh, you got the best doula on the planet, Cassius, right? Then you got the best look, bro. What? Why is this team go? It's like it's like the Avengers. Henry Clay. Henry Clay goes into court and his entire defense for his cousin is, and I quote, "Your Honor, this is just standard behavior for a Kentuckian." And the judge is just like. <laughs> You're innocent. Free to go. That's it. Best court case ever. Literally walks in and just goes. I thought this was America. Huh? Isn't this America? I'm sorry. I thought this was America. So after Cassius Clay was found innocent, Henry Clay decides that he's going to run for president and Cassius is going to help him campaign. Cassius is going to tour the country, giving speeches, saying, hey, you know, vote for my cousin. Here's the rule with that. Henry Clay told him he's only allowed to tour the northern states because he's actually legitimately concerned that if he sends Cassius to the south, he's going to shoot so many fucking slave owners in duels that it could be considered voter fraud. So Henry Clay ends up losing the presidential election and Cassius moves wow. on to his next life adventure, which is becoming an author and writing anti-slavery news articles. The problem with that was none of the newspapers were willing to publish him so he says fuck you i'll start my own newspaper the true american now you know what i reckon all the slave owners back in this day bro was like they, they were somehow like communicating with bird the page you know notes in the bird like yo where, where's cash is that is he coming to our state he better not be coming here oh my god he's coming here oh i bet i better run You'll be, you'll be terrified, bro. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, starting an anti-slavery newspaper in fucking Kentucky in 1845 was not very popular, and his business right. would receive death threats pretty much every day, it's some Cassius of which were in blood. So Cassius Clay, in true Cassius Clay fashion, says, fuck it, I guess we're going to fight about it. He then proceeds to up-armor his entire business and his printing office. He covers the entire front of the office in a large iron sheet. He installs several cannons down corridors, stocks the entire what? thing with loaded guns, and rigs it to explode. Here's the thing. Thing, he also doesn't expect his employees to fight to the death for him so he installs right. an escape hatch and instructs them to escape if anything goes down because he's gonna fight the entire mob by himself how's it bro this guy this first of all you gotta respect it bro right like, like he he saw he sorted out the people that's working for him they go on exit, and then he's just gonna be crazy and just take them all on. Is he gonna do that? As soon as you walk in the only door to get into that printing office, you find yourself in a long, narrow corridor with iron on each side, just wide enough for a single man to get through. Cassius Clay is gonna stand in that narrow corridor and fight the entire mob one man at a time. Literally the mentality of if you have a wow. problem, take a number, I'll kill you in a minute. This man recreated the entire <laughs> battle of fucking Thermopylae with 300 <laughs> Spartans, except he's gonna do it all by himself. If you 
you think fucking with John Wick's dog is a bad idea, the last thing you want to do is fuck with Cassius Clay's printing press because this man is determined <laughs> to defend the freedom of speech with the right to bear arms at any cost. Obviously, but... this escalates to Cassius Clay defeating an entire mob single-handedly, right? Wrong. The mob being full of, you know, super brave pro-slavery men that know they're doing the right thing, uh, do the honorable brave thing, and wait till Cassius Clay is bedridden with typhoid fever so they know he isn't going to show up. They show up to his business at night and burn the place to the ground wow. because they're a bunch of fucking bitches. Now, Cassius Clay Fox. recovers from typhoid fever. He reestablishes a newspaper in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is an anti-slavery stronghold. The only problem with that is being an anti-slavery stronghold, there's not going to be any conflict, and that's fucking boring so Cassius Clay moves on to another life adventure volunteering in the Mexican-American War. While serving oh, yeah. in the Mexican-American War that he would be a captain leading a group of Kentucky soldiers and they would be captured pretty much immediately and he would spend the duration of the entire war as a POW. While serving as a POW some of the men under his command would escape meaning that the Mexican military was then going to put the rest of his unit to death. Cassius oh, wow. Clay said hey don't kill my men just kill me and my other fellow officers. We're the ones in charge. It's our fault that those men escaped. It's our responsibility. Please let the lower enlisted men go home. The Mexican military- Bro, what a- Bro, you gotta respect it, man. You gotta respect this guy. For what he stands for, fully. Terry was so impressed by this that they decided to spare a please let the lower enlisted men go home. The Mexican military was so impressed by this that they decided to spare everyone, including Cassius Clay. No way. And he would return home a war hero. Returning wow. home from the war in 1848, he didn't really know what to do, so he starts giving his famous speeches again. This time leveraging his newfound title as a war hero. So obviously <laughs> it doesn't take long for him to piss everybody off. He faces yet another assassination attempt. This wow. time six brothers from a wealthy slave owning family show up, the Turner brothers. They show up with clubs and knives and guns and they beat the living shit out of Cassius Clay with the clubs. They stabbed him uh, multiple times. Cassius Clay whips out his trusted Bowie knife, starts opening up these brothers like they're fucking Amazon packages, <laughs> making his way to the lead brother and stabbing him an excessive amount of times. We don't know how many times, but we do know it was a lifetime supply. Killing the lead brother, ending the assassination attempt, Cassius Clay would fall to the ground nearly dead and this would be the closest anybody ever came to actually killing Cassius Clay. When he was- You're telling me the brothers had good Guns on them, and whilst they were stabbing Cassius, right, they didn't shoot him. What, bro? Does Cassius just look at the gun and it just like breaks? Asked about it later on in life, all he said was, "I felt the utmost indignation." which translates to, I was fucking annoyed. This man <laughs> almost died from an assassination attempt, and he has the same attitude towards it that I have towards fucking fruit flies, okay? <laughs> this dude is so metal, he deserves his own spot on the periodic table of elements. Cassius Clay then makes a full recovery Mud. from his injuries, starts giving his speeches again. 1853, he donates a large chunk of his land to John Fee, who uses uh? it to found Berea College, the first co-educational and multiracial college in the South, ever. Oh, Fast wow, forward cool. to 1860, Cassius Clay is giving speeches in Illinois where he meets a politician by the name of Abraham Lincoln <laughs> and they get along great. Cassius Clay is then slotted to become Abraham Lincoln's vice president. However, he's a little bit too Cassius Clay to be an actual big name politician like that. So they give the job to Hannibal Hamlin and Cassius Clay becomes the ambassador to Russia. 1861 huh? rolls around, the Civil War breaks out. Cassius Clay is in Russia. Cassius Clay not only convinces Russia to not side with the Confederates, but he convinces Russia to tell Great Britain and France that if they so much as recognize the Confederacy, Russia will go to war with them. And this was a humongous step that nobody talks about what? in the winning of the Civil War. And it is 100% because because of Cassius Clay. Fast forward to 1862. Abraham Lincoln wants to appoint Clay a major general in the Union Army. Cassius Clay. Yo, 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 yo. This guy has had one hell of a life, bro. This is like, this is like five people's life story in one. Not noble people either. 1862, Abraham Lincoln wants to appoint Clay a major general in the Union Army. Cassius Clay publicly refuses the President of the United States, saying that he's not going to do it until the President signs the Emancipation Proclamation freeing the slaves of the South. Oh, Cassius what? Clay is literally the man that bullied Abraham Lincoln into prematurely signing the Emancipation Proclamation before he wanted to and nobody talks about it. Fast forward again to 1865, what? the Union wins the Great American Scrimmage, the slaves are freed. Cassius Clay has achieved his lifelong goal at the age of 55, bringing an end to slavery in the United States of America. Yo. He then goes back to Russia again to serve as ambassador until 1869, and while he is there, he helps to broker the purchase of Alaska. This man is probably the most influential person in America. Wait, no, no, bro, this is too much. This is too much. This is honestly like, 
so many like insane men into one bro this is mad what is this guy not done <laughs> what is he not done you tell me that okay there he helps to broker the purchase of alaska this man is probably the most influential person in american history that you've never heard of after returning home from yeah Russia, cassius clay would live out the rest of his days in whitehall until the age of 80 years old where he would be declared clinically insane in hindsight most likely due to a severe amount of ptsd as well as potentially dementia uh right. he didn't die from it he lived on for quite a bit longer he just picked up a new hobby of fucking with the local sheriff because he was crazy now over the course of the next decade clay and the sheriff would have <laughs> multiple run-ins that would be concluded when the sheriff and seven deputies were repelled from Whitehall when Clay utilized his home defense cannon that he had at the top of his stairwell. At that point, the local sheriff would inform the local judge he will not be returning to Whitehall to tangle with Cassius Clay anymore unless the judge was willing to dispatch an entire company of the local militia to accommodate him. <laughs> then in 1900, two men would break into Whitehall and Cassius Clay at the age of 89 would manage to kill both of them, one by gunshot what? and one yet again with his trusted Bowie knife. Then in 1903, Okay, I understand gunshot, but at 89 years old, you have the strength to but Three, at the age of 92, Cassius Clay would die of natural causes, or as they called it back then, general exhaustion, which is the most gangster way on the planet to go out. Literally just, right. I'm tired now. Peace. And then he left. <laughs> I'm pretty tired. I think I'll go home. In conclusion, when it comes to- How we- How we- No, I heard of this guy. Actually, I want you guys to comment down below. Did you hear this guy before this video? Cassius Mar uh, Marcellus Clay? Cassius Clay? I need to know. Because, like, he's done so much bro famous historical household names there's always another man or woman lurking behind the scenes in the shadows that's deemed too rough around the edges to be in the spotlight yet they contribute right. just as much if not more to the movement these men and women right. were willing to do horrific things for terrific reasons and when it came to abraham lincoln and the abolition of slavery that man's name was cassius marcellus clay the most gangster politician in american history wow thanks for watching the video best way to support the bro channel is what a good video man Quack bang. Make sure you check him out. His link will be in the description. Honestly, 10 out of 10 videos. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on Twitch.tv forward slash LFWG. I hope you all have an amazing Christmas. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.